Hey, what's up, everyone? Drake, and back again here to tell you that you should be watching Ice City. So, Ice City is a 1986 Japanese animated film uh, based on the manga of the same name, which is written and illustrated by uh, Shihō Itahashi, uh, and is essentially the story of uh, Ki and I, who are on the run from this organization called Fraud. Uh, which are basically this group of people, individuals with the very powerful uh, psionic abilities. Um, you know, powerful telepathy, telekinesis, that sort of thing. Um, and he is on the run with... Um, uh, Key is basically on the run with I, and they're trying to get away because Fraud is trying to reacquire her. She is very important to them. Uh, she is meant to serve some kind of more grand purpose for their organization. Uh, that you learn more about through the course of the story. Um, and essentially it's the story of basically how he is serving as a kind of her adopted father. Uh, I'm not going to get tell you too much because it's kind of a crucial plot point, kind of like a big surprise in the middle of the story, but essentially she has a connection to his past that is very interesting and that makes her very kind of near and dear to him and he feels a great sense of responsibility to her, so much so that he is gladly taking on the mantle of kind of a father figure so she you know when she calls him papa he very much is there to fulfill that role and he's not you know he's not something he's just doing for her benefit as far as he's concerned she is his daughter and he has kind of pledged himself to protecting her to being her protector um and basically the course story is basically again the reacquisition of this girl uh understanding what these abilities do what they are ultimately for, what the end goal really is, and what it means for the world as a whole, and basically kind of life as a whole. Uh, and it really forces you to kind of um, look into kind of the nature of the human condition, so to speak. I mean, it's not hardly the first time, you know, a story has done that kind of thing, but it does so in a very interesting way, where it, the way it uses kind of biology and science, which are normally kind of viewed in kind of popular culture as kind of more cold and unfeeling things and how they are used within this story to tell a very kind of warm heartfelt story and then you realize that you know you know the biology of what we are is not this cold kind of soulless thing for lack of a better term um, but rather it is really the heart of what makes us who we are and what we are and what we are is essentially something far more beautiful and precious than we give ourselves credit for uh, and it is a story that shows that, you know, humanity has a choice to be better than it can be. Or it can kind of fall down this rabbit hole of corruption. And you see kind of these two sides play out uh, in this narrative in a very kind of compelling way. And the reason why I'm focusing on the film uh, rather than the manga um, is mainly because this film is... And, you know, yes, you look at it, it's dated, but, I mean, if you're a fan of anime and you're kind of a fan of anime from all eras, more specifically kind of the, the golden days of anime, um, you know kind of the 80s and 90s are kind of like what a lot of us kind of old-timers consider, like, you know, the glory era, when anime was at its best, when anime was pushing the medium of animation and really just creating something on screen that was beautiful to look at and this film is no exception uh the kind of the way it's shot a lot of the approach to how they shoot this the action in these in this film is almost like the way you would approach a live action film the staging of the camera the work and the way they just turn a lot of the the fight scenes into almost like choreographed dance moves um so much so that I, some there's a sequence in this film pretty early on where there's a there's a fight scene between Kay and like two other characters where it's um, it, it's so similar to a fight scene from the movie Blade 2, uh, directed by Guillermo del Toro, where you know Blade is fighting these two ninja vampires against a backdrop of like light, and it's just kind of they're more their dark and silhouettes, just a little bit of lighting on them. You can see some detail, but they're but they're predominantly silhouetted against this little wall of light, and you're seeing them do all these acrobatic moves, very beautiful, like graceful movements to kind of show off the skill they possess as combatants and I know you know based on interviews I seen him do for that film way back when he said he was very much influenced by anime and that he would watch a lot of anime 
when he was kind of choreographing the fight sequences for that movie. So knowing that he's a fan of anime, especially old school anime, I kind of wonder if that sequence was the inf influence for the one in Blade 2. I mean, regardless if it wasn't or was not, you can very much see how anime kind of portrays combat or a action sequence. Uh, and to see that in kind of similar mindset translated into a live action film, and you realize that when you see it in the me medium of animation, especially Japanese anime, it's 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 like a it's like a kind of a visual art in and of itself. Uh, the, the action sequence can almost stand apart from the overall as just you know just moments of you know visual art in and of themselves. And this film does that several times beautifully, uh, and that's what I mean again in talking about how pushing. The, the you know the medium of animation really showing what could be done with animation that you know animation wasn't just kids cartoons that you could tell a compelling uh, and very dynamic story through this medium um, and the 80s and 90s were very much um, kind of a an important time in not just Japanese animation but animation as a whole because even though these films weren't really being widely distributed outside of Japan uh, during this time period. A lot of times you would see them in France. France was a big kind of exporter of, you know, Japanese culture. But it really wasn't until like, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s in America, for instance, where a lot of this stuff started to become known. But once it did, so many people were basically kind of seeing what could be done um, through animation. Uh, so for that reason alone, it, this film is definitely worth checking out. But it has a wonderful story and the characters are very, very compelling. And you cannot help but root for them. And even the villains in this story are interesting because you see them as not just with these one-note, you know, mustache-filling bad guys. And some of them are maybe uh, depicted as such in the beginning. But as the story progresses, you realize that there are, there are layers to these characters, that they are the way they are for a certain reason. And then from their perspective, they see their own versions of wrong and right. And they have their own emotional connections with each other. So when one of them, you know, falls, you see the toll it takes on them. They're just not these cruel, heartless, you know, villainous characters where they don't care about each other whereas you know the good guys always care about everyone around them you see kind of both sides of a conflict and you realize that both sides are fighting for something that is important to them and it makes it for a much more dynamic story and a much more realistic story despite the very kind of fantastical imagery you're seeing on screen um, but yeah that's kind of it um, again it's kind of a short it's it's kind of a very straightforward story but again it has a lot of subtext there that makes you really think. And that's one of the great things anime used to do a lot more back in the day. Is that it made you think a lot more. It made you question things. They didn't, rarely did you ever get just kind of very straightforward story. Whenever there was a story that was very much rooted in character drama, uh, the creators of these anime were always looking to kind of do something more with it. Make you question things. Make you think a little bit more. Make you kind of... Uh, wonder why it is you might have been expecting one thing and then why you feel the way you do when you got something else. And again, it was always kind of a, an interesting experience when you watched anime from this time period. I'm not saying that everything from the 80s and 90s was like, you know, this, this tour de force, but you tend to find a lot more uh, stories like that. And as a whole, there was, I think there was a lot more variety too. You could have a more dramatic story like this. You could have more, you know, slice of life stuff. You could have more rom-com stuff, you could have more scary stuff, you could have stuff that's very adult. Uh, it, it, it was a, the medium as a whole was a reflection of kind of society as a whole. You got a little bit of everything within it. And this film, I would say, is kind of a good introduction to people who are perhaps even just new to anime as a whole. Again, I know it's old, but so what? I mean, I love me some 80s anime. Um, but also, if you're maybe younger and you're only really used to like modern anime, you don't really, you know, you know, maybe stuff in the last 10, 15 years, basically more or less the 2000s, you know, and you're maybe curious about older stuff, you're not sure, you don't know if you'll like it, you know, how will it compare to what you're used to, for instance, um, you know, you know, I would say this is a good introduction. It's about an hour and a half, so it's not going to eat up. It's not going to a whole series that's going to, you know, require a lot of your time. It's going to kind of give you, you know, the whole story, the characters, everything you need to know about it and kind of understand what they're trying to tell in a more condensed period of, you know, amount of time. And you kind of get a sense for just anime from that time period, anime from yesteryear, anime from a period of time that, you know, you are less familiar with, but uh, anime that probably influenced a lot of the stuff you watch today. Um, so I would definitely recommend it for that one. So with that said, um, iCity, have you seen it? If so, what did you think? 
If you have not, I will put links in the description section below where you can pick it up, check it out. Uh, last I checked, it was still out there available. Um, you just know that if it's not, I'll put some uh, some TBAs in the link sections in the second it becomes available in one format or another. Um, uh, you know, I'll put those there. Uh, if they are not available anywhere, um, real talk, it's on YouTube. <laughs> But if you want to support this and you want to maybe add it to your collection, again, I will put links in the script section below. But worse and worse, if all those links are dead or they're just you know out, or sometimes unfortunately with these older titles that are out of circulation, if you know you find a DVD on Amazon, it's through a third-party seller, and it's a lot of money. Just know that there are other places you can find it. Again, you know, YouTube. Worse comes to worse. But definitely support it if you can, if it is made available in official capacity. I always ask that you guys please, please, please support it because the more support these things get, uh, the more attention they get, and the more likely we are to get more things like it. Uh, so that is going to do it for this one. Real quick, I just want to point out, um, I know this is a very kind of sparse background compared to what you're used to. Uh, Ash and I just moved uh, to Washington State. Uh, we're currently in an apartment, but we're basically going to be getting a house soon where we're going to kind of be able to decorate it more lavishly and kind of put up all the posters again. So we're not really unpacking much of anything, just kind of the bare necessities just to kind of live. But this is a kind of a temporary setup. So just for a little bit, you know, these videos are not going to have a lot of, you know, razzle dazzle behind us on screen. So you'll be forced to look at my ugly mug for a little while. I'm sorry. Um, but I'll promise I'll try to fill these videos with uh, things that I hope you find fascinating and interesting. But anyway guys, that is going to do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I will catch you in the next one. Peace!